Hey guys, in this episode I'm going to be showing you how to add audio filters to your projects. Last episode we did video filters, and, or I should say video effects. This time we're going to be going over the audio effects. Same sort of thing here, we're going to go to the effect folder down here in the bottom left hand corner by the kind of sharing tabs with the project window down here. And you'll see one of the folders down here is called audio effects. If you arrow this down you're going to be able to go through this. I'm going to tilde over this, hit the tilde key so I go full screen and look at all the different audio effects that are in here. A couple of the more common ones you're going to see in here are things like the denoiser. Equalizer is going to be a very common one as well. Things like reverb, pitch shift, or some other things that, that can be used. Keep in mind that Premiere is not necessarily a huge audio program. It's not really optimized for professional audio level. It does do, I shouldn't say professional audio level, it does do professional quality audio, but it's not really built like something like uh, Pro Tools or Cubase or something that's built specifically to work with audio. So it's just got, got some quick features here for people people that are maybe a little less familiar with audio. It, it kind of helps us through some of the through audio filters, makes it a lot easier than if you're a professional audio person. Just a little disclaimer there. So one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to test out, uh, let's try reverb because this is one of the, this is one of the more obvious ones here. I'm going to grab this plugin and it's very similar to the video clips where you want to change your audio here. I'm going to grab a plugin. Well, first of all, before I do that, let's play back some audio. So let's listen to this. There's nothing to worry about. So you don't worry about me. So very normal sounding audio here. I'm going to grab the reverb. I'm going to drag this over and drop it onto this clip here. If you want to add a little bit of an echo to something like they're in a warehouse or something like that. I just drop that on and this is very similar to how the video works. When you select your audio track here, go up to effects controls, uh, you will see your reverb added under the effect controls. If you haven't watched the video one, I recommend going and watching that before going through this. It'll make a bit more sense. There's that reverb effect right there added to this uh, effect controls here. Now a lot of the audio filters will have this little preset item right here next to it. If you click on that, you can do a quick preset you, or you can customize it yourself and you have access to the inv individual parameters here. Like the video filters, this will take some experimentation. You go in and kind of experiment with these things and see what you get. But right here with the audio, you can just click on these presets and you can find a uh, small room, medium room, large room, church, large hall, studio, these, these different types of echoes, different types of reverb here. Let's try, let's go extreme and do large hallway and see what that does. So you can see it just changed the individual parameters here and set these individual parameters for this preset. Let's play through this and listen. There's nothing to worry about, so you don't worry about me. There you go. And these are the numerical versions right here of the changes that are making uh, based on things like absorption, pre-delay, density, all those different things dealing with audio there. You can hit edit here and it will bring up a visual, it'll bring up a visual representation of these numerical items here. And you can just grab these knobs and turn them around and you change the graph up here. I'm going to make a disclaimer here, I'm not a huge audio person, I'm more visual editing and post-production, I know a little bit uh, about audio, so I'm not a professional audio person, but these are kind of the basics. Like I said, you'll have to uh, come in and experiment with Premiere, but this is basically how it's done. You can change these numbers in here and get different levels of echo. Let's back. To worry about, so you don't Let's change our preset. Let's do a small room or medium room and see what we get. There's nothing to worry about, so you don't worry about me. Okay, so that's uh, not as echoey as it was before. And this is very similar to the video filters where you have the option of going up to the effect and you can turn it on or off and it, it will disable that reverb temporarily or that effect temporarily if you hit the effects, now it's back on. Or you can just simply select it and hit backspace or delete and it gets rid of that filter off of that clip. But to see the filter that you are accessing, you need to ha you need to be playing over it, you need to have the clip selected and you have to have your effects controls window open to see that effect. Okay, let's go through and try an equalizer now. I'm gonna grab this. Uh, equalizers are good if you're trying to get rid of, if you have audio that's too bassy or if you have some high frequencies that sound a little too high pitched, you can get rid of those through an equalizer. You can kind of tone those things down. I've added that equalizer. I've dragged and dropped it to our audio clip here. And there it is right there on our effects. I'm, here's a little preset. We can click on that and pull it down and we can change these things here. We can do, we can enhance the bass, warm present, sweep maker, different things here that will change the frequencies. Let's take a look at one of these, what one of these things do. I'm at, guessing bass enhance is going to add a bit of bass to it. I'm going to hit bass enhance and now let's play this back and see if we notice a different difference. Nothing to worry about, so you don't worry about me. Hard to tell on that. I'm going to put that back to default. 
I'm going to worry about, so you don't worry about me. Let's see what this is doing visually. I'm going to go to Base Enhance. Now I'm going to go to Edit and see what this has done. Here are the individual parameters. You will see those change. As we change them, you have the low frequencies, the mid frequencies, and the high frequencies here. Uh, but I'm going to hit Edit on Custom Setup. It's going to bring up this visual. And let's see what that does. That that has actually brought up the bass a little bit and brought up kind of uh, a little bit on the higher frequencies as well. Because a straight line is the way this is going to come across basically default here. I'm going to go to default. Notice it's just a straight line. This is untouched. And now if we go to bass enhance, it brings up the bass. If you bring up warm presence, it brings up a little bit of the mids and some of the and some of the high frequencies as well and keeps the bass neutral. Sweet maker. So there are a whole bunch of presets. This brings up some higher frequencies. There's also some items here, high enhance that, that gradually brings up the higher frequencies here and makes a higher pitch loudness that's going to bring up the bass. So you see some different presets that are going on here. And you have to just kind of change these. And what you can what's nice about Premiere is you can actually go to the beginning of a clip and you can change these live as you're playing. So let's press play. Nothing to worry about. And now I'm going to grab this. So you don't knob worry about me. Up. That changes where the frequency node takes place. Here we can grab this node. I'm going to crank this bass way up, and let's hear what we get. There's nothing to worry about. So you don't worry about. And I'm not sure if you'll hear it on your speakers. On mine, that's getting a rumbly bass at the bottom there. You, I can really hear that. But you can kill bass here by taking that way down. Let's take that way down. I'm going to pull that up so it's killing all the lower frequencies here. So this is probably going to destroy the audio a bit. There's nothing to worry about. And that almost sounds like it's on a telephone now. There's nothing to worry about. So you don't worry about me. That sounds very unnatural, but you can kind of see what's happening there. You can also boost up the gain here of what you're doing. It'll boost up all the frequencies that you're messing with and exaggerate them. And if you really know what you're doing, you can go in and start changing the numbers as well. Now this here, you'll notice that this audio has been separated from the video. When I select the audio, it does not select the video. Let's find a clip. Here's one that uh, these two are joined together. If we grab an effect and we drop it onto this audio here, You'll notice up here in this window, it brings up your video effects and your audio effects. Sometimes if you have a lot of video effects, you're going to have to collapse. If these arrows are expanded here, you might have to collapse these because your audio filters might be disappearing down here at the bottom of the window. You can either scroll down to it or just collapse these video windows and you will see the audio effects right here. So you have your video effects and the audio effects when there is a clip that is linked. When there is a video clip that is linked to an audio clip, it will show both categories of effects up in the effects controls. And audio is very similar to the to the video where you can keyframe it as well. I went through this on the video, but I will quickly show this here. If you go down into let's grab our reverb, drop it onto this clip. So now I've got a reverb added. Like I said, if you haven't gone through the video tutorial, please do. This will go through the keyframing a little bit more and it will go through the keyframing a little bit more in detail. But you have your little keyframer here, um, and you have a keyframer for all of your filters here. So I can change this to, let's go to large hall. Now as we play through this, to worry. here it's a large hall. And notice these numbers have all changed down here. So we're going to turn on our keyframes for all these items here. Actually, we won't have to. We're going to just usually if you see one that's called mix, that turns your that completely turns all these items on and off. If you have your mix at zero, that basically it's like an opacity level on video. Very similar that if you turn this down, you will no longer have the effect applied. So I'm going to turn on my mix keyframe right here. At the beginning, it's at 82%, so it's not at full percent There's here. There's nothing to worry about. It's echoey. And right here, I'm going to have it. I'm going to add another keyframe. And right here, I'm going to turn my mix down to zero. I had to arrow this down to get access this. Some of these things you just have to experiment with with different filters. They have kind of different ways of working. Now, as we play this, you'll hear it goes from equi to non equi. It'll interpolate from this point to this point. There's nothing to worry about. So you don't worry about me. And now the filter is completely turned off at zero mix. So that's basically how you keyframe. You can experiment with these other things and see what you get. And this is very similar to the video as well. Like I mentioned, I keep saying you can go under the effects of one clip. You can select it. You can do Command C and copy. You can move your playhead over, select a different clip, and do Command V and paste. And it just pasted that exact same filter with the keyframes, in fact, on this clip here. You can actually save presets. You can just right click on a filter and save presets and you can name it and it will save it down in your preset folder right here. As you save those, you'll see those things show up in your presets and you can add those to future clips and you can save your presets, the ones that you like. So like I said, if you haven't gone over the video one, go back, go over it and these filters work 
fairly much the same as the as the video as the video filters work. If you have any questions, please post them. If you have any recommendations, please post those as well. And uh, thanks for watching.